He's over here. Are you allowed to do that? Yeah, you're allowed to do that. Raise it up, raise it up, raise it up. That's it. That's it. Oh, oh my goodness! That's a good one! <laughs> are you allowed to do that? Oh, are we allowed to do that? Crop your carpet one with that big, big pole. Oh my goodness! All right, tell them the number of the guide service. That's right. 662-820-6367. You better come out here and fish for crappie with Still John Lee. Lee. John Lee, right. nice to meet you, my friends. Nice to meet you. Roy's store, huh? Roy's store and cabins right here on Lake Washington. This is a, kind of a, a, the place on Lake Washington, this isn't is it? This is the place. This is where the, the farmers and the fishermen all congregate right here and get us a bite to eat, bait, anything you need. And, and tell some tall fishing tales? That's right. Well, we better check this place out. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Yes, sir. Would you consider this uh, the definition of a crappie community here? Definitely a crappie community. And, and not just crappie, you know, there's, there's great bass fishing in the lake. Uh, they like to slap full of catfish, good brim. Uh, it's just a, you know, th a thriving lake. Yeah. You gotta get down to Lake Washington and have yourself a little fishing adventure. <laughs> this is great. This is great. I fished this lake one time. Uh, and it was so overcast, it was actually snowing, and it was for a, a tournament about, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years back, uh, and it started snowing on us, and everybody was catching fish except us, and we got so frustrated that we were going to fish the tournament the next day, but we fished the Big Mama tournament that day, which was free. <clears throat> we were so frustrated we just said we're going to Tunica forget this <laughs> and so we just went and gambled and lost all of our money in Tunica but come to find out that these crappies stay up high in the water column is that correct that's usually pretty, that's pretty well correct uh, this, this cold front has actually put them down a little deeper than usual yeah we'll still see some fish it's been this nice sunshine I'll bring some of them up and they'll warm up in that uh, but typically you can catch fish year round in this lake, two to three foot deep. Two to three feet deep. Yes, they yeah. might be in twenty foot of water, but they'll still be suspended two to three foot deep. Is that because the shad um, actually stay up that high, or what's what's the cause of that? Do you know? The shad, you know, they fluctuate. They'll be they'll be up or down, but I think it just has to do with active crappie. You know, when these yeah. crappie get active, they come up to the surface, and it may be because they chase the bait fish to the surface. Yeah, uh, but they just tend to to year round catch them shallow but i think that's kind of a, a southern thing because it's the same way on, on several lakes that we fish around here is that right. the fish will be shallow you can catch them in three foot of water to 30 foot of water but they'll, they'll pretty much be the same depth i'll be done so i noticed the crappie connection uh brad chapel who i'm actually going to have the pleasure of fishing with uh here tomorrow uh so influential in the crappie industry isn't he exactly you know and that's kind of where the crappie connection started is is we both have a passion for for spreading the word you know yeah getting it out there hey you know you can you can catch fish so many different ways so many different lakes you know it's, it's just it's all about getting out there doing what you want to do yeah and catching a mess of fish and you know it doesn't matter if you're live scoping or if you're spider rigging or yeah you know long line and pulling crankbaits planter boards it's just so many ways to catch them right. and i enjoy doing it every single way Woo! We got the BGJPs. That's right. Well, trusty. And how long are those? These are 16 foot. 16. We're going to get out there, huh? That's right. Look at that. One of my favorite colors. What do we got there? <clears throat> Bobby Garland. All right. This is called the Minnow Minder. Minnow Minder. Okay. Kind of got a little split tail to where the minnow's sitting there just right. No As way. As it wriggles, it kind of knocks them back and forth. But 
If the sun's out, that right there, that is my absolute favorite color. That gets their attention. They can see that from a few extra inches away, in my opinion. John Lee, that's ingenious. I never even knew Bobby Garland made a bait like that. The, the minnow minder. Very cool. The minnow sits in there just like that. <clears throat> oh, look at that. It's got just a little bit of extra action. That's right. That's very cool. Very cool. And so basically these are like Caps and Coleman rigs we got, we're dropping That's down right. there? That's right. Half ounce. I got some hand tied, some Caps mm. and Coleman. Yeah. Uh, and they're just plain hooks and we'll tip a few jigs on just to give it a little extra color. Yeah. And see which one the fish want the most. You know, sometimes it's plain minnow, sometimes it's a little color. Yeah. We'll get a feel for what they want to eat and we'll make an adjustment. Sometimes if it's all color, I'll put a, a jig on every single pole. Okay. Very cool. That's kind of always been my method is I try a couple of different things on a couple of different poles and let the fish tell me what they want. Yeah, yeah. Let them speak to you. Fish guide, and you said you're an engineer, right? I work for an engineering company. Oh. I'm a uh, I, I was civil thinking. engineer technician. Civil engineer technician. Okay. Yes. I, uh, basically, I do everything in the field for a civil engineer. I, I land survey. Uh, construction observation. Uh, we actually we test soil. Uh -huh. I do density test on soil for compaction. Uh, test concrete. Yeah. So all that type of stuff. Anything out in the field, as far as gathering information, that's what I go and do. And they keep you pretty busy, huh? They do. They keep. But they uh, where I work, they they know my passion for fishing. Yes. Yeah. And they they are completely in understanding that. I won't leave them high and dry, you know, but if, if, if I can get a chance to break away to go fishing, yeah, I can get a chance to go fishing. <laughs> All right. And then you you guide a lot on the weekends too then? Yes, pretty much weekends is, is what I do. Yeah. Uh, Brad guides seven days a week, so he's the during the week guy. And weekends is, is kind of my main time for guides. Married with a boy, correct? Yes. 17 months, you said? 17 months. That'll keep you busy too, huh? He is wide open. He's what's his, give him a shout out here. John Regan. And say hello to the wife. Hello, darling. And tell her thank you for letting you do what you love exactly, to do. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. She's at work and we're fishing. Yeah, she's a pretty good woman, huh? Yeah, she is. Great cook. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> you know, I don't, if I see a skinny fisherman, I don't really trust them that much, do you? <laughs> I don't know if they can catch a lot of fish. That's right. They, they may not be catching a lot of fish if there's any. Yeah. I, I joke, you know, there's a lot of... Kevin McCarley, he's, they call him Corn Dog. That's his nickname because he's so skinny. He, he, he can catch them. Oh, yeah. Clay Blair, he's, he's a firefighter. He, he's probably the fittest of all the crappie fishermen out there, so... I joke, I joke. <laughs> Speaking of cook, how do you like to cook these crap? Honestly, uh, my favorite is baked. Baked, yes, okay. I uh, we fry them, of course, uh, but baked is my favorite. Just a little lemon pepper, you know, and some butter. Yeah, it's light. That's right. And it didn't put all that that oil and that grease and that fried fish in you, right? Right. What I usually do, <clears throat> bait fresh fish, it, it's going to be baked. You know, okay. so if I went in this afternoon and I wanted to eat some fresh fish, I'm going to eat it baked. Uh, if I fry fish, that's what I'll, I'll have those frozen in, in the freezer and I'll thaw them out and fry them. This fish might be coming out of our mouth. I'm driving to it. That's the big one, too. Let's go. That's the biggest one we've seen today. I'm going to get the net. Preemptively get the net. Oh, he sees it, too. He sees it. Side. It's on my side? No, it's on your side. It's, it's this front pole here. He's looking at it. That's it. He's taking the top jig. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. How did he take that up there? He's coming back to it. There, you got it. Got him. Oh, Brian, that's a big one, too. Oh, my goodness. A little more. Oh, we got him. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm getting a workout. Ned didn't crop you that big. Woo, who needs a gym membership? You got a belly? Dang, nap. Going for the top hook. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, I tell people now that I go crappie hunting. 
Yeah. Because I mean, we knew what we were about to, what was about to take place. Yeah. Big yeah. buck hunt. <laughs> we saw that big body and. Wow. We knew that was going to be. <laughs> that's the biggest blob we've seen. Yeah. Hold it out the all the way. Biggest we've caught. Wow, that is incredible. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Life washing crappie. Healthy. Healthy, yep. healthy, healthy. She, she still got eggs left to spawn. She's released some, but not all of them. Yeah. But see how deep they are. Oh, my gosh. Back. Yeah. Very cool. Very good. Females. She's doing her thing. Cruising around. Yeah, I saw her suspended. I knew that was that was a fish that was gonna bite. Good deal. Yeah. I like these crappie on that side. Uh -oh. oh my gosh, you got off! <laughs> oh, I was counting my chickens, John. I was counting my chickens. Ah, uh, he's gonna go over here on my side. Yeah, he was just just two and a half pound crappie. Got my shoulder is a little sore going to the net. Oh man, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'm so used but, to hey, baiting he's, everybody's hooks for him. He uh. He definitely uh, had the right attitude. Oh yeah, they uh, they're hungry, aren't they? When they see it, they're biting. They're biting. We, just, we have to, you know, put yeah. the baits in front of the fish. Boy, the, that braking system you got going on there—that really helps, huh? Yeah. Yeah. MacGyver. That's uh, you know, crappie breaks. There he is. is a, he did. He didn't go too far. That's right. He's gonna, over there on your side. And he's over there too. But I use mine more as a, a reverse. A reverse, yeah. A reverse yeah. Uh, to, to, back it, to back it up again to put the baits back on the fish. I got you. Uh, I mean, I can use it for, for breaks, but I'm not, when you're multi-fold spider rigging, you're not going that fast. No. So it's, I use my drift paddles as my brakes. I have those down, and I use those to stop the boat. We're going 0.5 right now. I'm about to speed up to get closer to this fish. Yeah. And I'll drop the paddles. And when I do that, it'll actually slow, slow the boat down to almost a stop. Yeah. But then if the fish comes past the poles, I can actually back it back up and put the bait in front of the fish again. Do you play any instrument, like the piano or the organ or something like that? I do not. You do not? Because this is kind of like an or orchestra, you know, with everything you're doing, with the back and the front and the poles. I mean, it's a, it's a very unique, honed way of fishing. Oh jeez! Oh jeez! Turning. He's turning. You're gonna catch that fish that I missed. I'll get the net. I'll get the net. Did you get him? Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. You did it. Here's Kirby's fish. He caught my fish. <laughs> <laughs> he bit again. Dang it! He bit again. You know, the only time I've ever seen somebody catch a fish that was missed is uh, Jeremy Aldridge and Nick Hudson did it one time on camera. They got the fish all the way up to the top. It came off, and uh, Jeremy had the forward thinking to go get it. She's already laid her eggs. Yes, look Let at that. that. Belly is. Wow, Kirby fish. John Lee, everybody <laughs> catching the fish I missed. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, this past weekend, there you go, big mom. We caught a crappie three times before we got her in the net. Did you really? Yes, sir. Okay, so it's it's not that uncommon because I. It's not easy. Yeah, but. <laughs> Uh, when they're hungry, they're hungry. When they're hungry, they're hungry. Just like that fish. When we literally pulled her up to the surface, and I can assure you that was the same. It was the same fish. I saw it because it, it turned. It never left the site when it came off. That is cool, dude. That is very, very cool. Oh, but yeah, this uh, at the crappie masters, we uh, you caught one three times. The first time we caught the fish, stuck her. She come up probably two or three feet, spit the hook. Yeah. Went back down. I said, okay, we had a jig. Put a in on. Went back down on her. Stuck her again. Yeah. She starts coming up. Go for the net. She comes off just like it did just then. Comes yeah. off at the surface. I poke. And I actually hit the fish with the net. Under the surface. Yeah. So I said, well, we're not going to get her a third time. I just hit her with the dip net. Yeah. So I did the old John Harrison. Yeah. 
We call it the Indian trick. What's that? Take a minnow, you hook it behind the halfway in the tail. Okay. The back third of the minnow. Uh huh. And that minnow sitting there just doing this, doing yeah. this, just a lot of action, a yeah. lot of action. Did the Indian trick put it on her? Boom. Wow. And now I know some of you that are watching this are going to be like, oh, these guys are so full of it. There's no way that they could have caught the same fish twice. But the fact of the matter is, we are looking 50 feet in any direction and we're seeing one giant dot. Just one giant right. dot. And right. we're looking, he, John's scanning left, right. So we saw one giant dot, it got off, and immediately we saw basically where the fish got off, that giant dot reappear. It's not, you know, just a coincidence. No, he, he went out probably 35 feet and yeah. just sit there. It did just happen. I, I know some of you <laughs> doubters out there will be like, oh, these guys, they catch one fish and they catch another and say they caught the same fish twice, but that did just happen. And that and, is where we caught these fish, right? When we got to the little squiggly lines. Oh yeah, yeah. We should just fish the squiggly lines, period. <laughs> I didn't drop a waypoint on that one because I don't want you to know exactly where we were. Oh, yeah. We're just out here. Well, all I got to do, I got that Garmin watch. All I got to do is just set this right here. <laughs> boom. And then the next time I'm at Washington Lake, I can just link my waypoints to my Garmin fish finder. So you're in big trouble. Anytime I check the time after catching a fish, you know I'm doing something devious. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> you better get yourself one of these. <laughs> That uh, you were saying that you fished a tournament here before, and yeah, it, and it got cold. Uh huh. I think I may have been fishing that time. Was it was it right in front of a crappie masters? Uh, I think it was a crappie masters because they had a free tournament on Friday where anybody could join, and it was called the Big Mama tournament. And we set up shop, and we had all the latest greatest gear, but we didn't know the lake because we fished under the fish the entire day and we and we didn't know anything about spider rigging we were casting to them we were running fin spins because we heard that they were on the spawn and you know every lake is so different mm -hmm. with crappie presentations and the crappie puzzle that uh, we were just in, you, we were imbeciles and we got frustrated <laughs> like it's snowing yep we could be at the casino in the poker room drinking so we headed out we weren't gonna pay you know what is it five hundred dollars the next I day to try remember. to get smoked and skunked by I, I people think that i had... definitely remember that particular tournament because you said the snow and during the spawn yeah and we were actually fishing right in this area yeah and uh on that tournament day we started out kind of closer to that water tower and was fishing this away yeah and first thing that morning we caught four two and a half pound crappie Ooh. and broke off probably five <sighs> Bad yeah. luck, but what it was, the, the string was so cold, the line was breaking. Are you kidding me? Yes. Does that that line really is? Uh... I think it was because it was getting cut. The tips of the poles were getting ice on them. Ice on them. And it was cutting the line. So you set the hook, darn. and it was a gamble. You were gonna break the line to catch the fish. Do you always fish with this high visibility? I do. I like the high vis just because I can watch the, the yeah. string, you know. That fish that I caught a while ago, these BNMs are so sensitive. Yeah. You know, these BGJPs, that's what I love about them, is the fish does not feel the pole. Yeah. So they'll bite it and they don't even know that there's, they're hooked. Yeah, and that's I true. And I watched that fish, that, that pole tip went down probably an inch. Yeah. And the line started moving to the side. Yeah. It was getting out of rhythms because I can see that line. I knew you inch last so he's got it. Yeah. You know, and I'm watching on live scope now, but before live scope, you, you fished on sight. So yeah. that's what we did. We watched these pole tips and you watch the stream, you know. And a lot of times you're watching them, all of a sudden the stream will go that way. Just scanning. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh you mean the the line in contrast to the water, if it does something different, set the hook. Yes. Okay, I gotcha. Yes. Yeah, and then you have the clear of the actual caps of Coleman rig, so Correct. and what, what pound test is this? That's 10 pound test. 10 line. pound high vis, and then I, I think it's eight pound on those uh, mm -hmm. caps of Coleman rigs. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I tend to use a little bit heavier line because I don't fish very deep. If you have a heavier line, uh, it, it's harder to fish deeper, you know, but right. I like the heavier line because if we catch a really big fish, you can just kind of hoist them in, you know, you don't have to worry about taking it easy on the line. Right, right. Uh, you catch a big trash fish or something like that, you can keep your rig, you know. Right, right. Because we do have drum in here. Yeah. That'll uh, 
wreak havoc on a, on a rig. If oh, geez. You're not careful. Get all of your rods messed up. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Been around on her. Woohoo! Good work, job. Boy, when we find them, they are in the right mood. Oh yeah. Ooh, that's a beautiful, beautiful fish. Wow. Falling out. Flat yep. belly. Yep. No eggs in her, huh? Oh, wow. We can weigh one. How about that? That way we can, well, hey, before we can we, compare. Before we weigh it, man, thank you so much for your time. Yes, sir. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, you got to get in touch with John Lee uh, or, or or Brad Chapel, whoever right. you're guiding for. Or, right. and, and 
get to Washington Lake Giants of Mississippi. Look how beautiful that fish! That big old humpback. And uh, man, come have yourself a time. Uh, there's all sorts of cabins to rent on this lake, and and what was the place? Ron's. Roy's. Roy's. Roy's store. They got all sorts of things uh, there. Well, boy, that is a tank. We'll weigh her. We're gonna weigh her. They're weighing probably just shy of two pounds. All right. Well, thank you so much, John Lake. Thank you guys for watching. Make certain you uh, tell some people about Fishy Live so we continue to grow this channel. And let's see how much she weighs here. 174. 174. Still a trophy fish. Man. That's a beautiful, beautiful Lake Washington crappie. You guys have a great day. Thanks for watching and God bless. Back she goes. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching Fish Eat Live. Our mission is to demonstrate the benefits of the Fish Eat Live lifestyle. We look forward to educating, entertaining, and attracting you to the healthy lifestyle of the great outdoors. We're definitely going to have some wholesome family fun on the water every Sunday at 6 p.m. So hit that subscription and that notification bell because we want you to come be a part of this.